Eureka! The story so far. If you divide the force you get out of a machine by the force you put into it, you will discover the mechanical advantage of that machine. But since every machine involves contact between moving surfaces, its mechanical advantage will always be reduced to some extent by the force of friction. There's a lot of friction involved with the inclined plane, but hardly any with the lever. And now, the screw and the wheel. How many different types of simple machine do you think there are? Two. There are only two basic machines, the inclined plane and the lever. These are the mother and father of every machine in the world. All the others are merely variations on the same theme. For example, there's a beautiful machine. No, not your car. The road. Yes, the road. A winding mountain road is a machine, too. Well, suppose the road didn't wind. Suppose it went straight up the side of the mountain. This is a much shorter way to the top, isn't it? And yet, it won't do you much good, because the engine of even your magnificent automobile hasn't enough force to lift your car straight up. But suppose we make the road long enough and the slope gentle enough for you to drive up the mountain with ease. What have we done now? Yes, we've made the road into an inclined plane, a simple machine. But that's an expensive way to go up a mountain. It requires an awfully long ramp. What if we wrap the inclined plane round the mountain instead? Now we're back where we started, with a winding mountain road, which is really an inclined plane in disguise. A twisted inclined plane, if you like. There are twisted inclined planes all over the place. This includes every device that has a spiraling, corkscrewing action, and which allows you to trade extra turning distance for reduced force, either to help you lift things, or fasten things together. Here is the commonest example of all, the screw, which is, in fact, the very name which physicists give to every type of twisted inclined plane, the screw. So that's one of the descendants of the inclined plane. Hang on a minute. Can you give me an example of a simple machine that is descended from the lever? Well, you're holding one in your hand right now. Yet another machine that doesn't look like a machine. I know. But have you ever tried to open a door without a doorknob? You haven't got enough leverage, have you? That's where the doorknob comes in. It's a direct descendant of the lever. Like this. Or this. Or this. They're all children of the lever. How come? Well, a long time ago, some very wise men were looking at a lever one day, when they suddenly thought how nice it would be if the extra force the lever gives you to move something from here to here, say, four times the force, because one lever arm is four times the length of the other, they wondered if this extra force could be extended through 360 degrees. In other words, they wondered if they could make a circular lever, a lever that would go all the way round. And while they were at it, they made up a new name, an axle. With its center where the point of the fulcrum used to be, and the short arm of the lever now running from this center to the outside of the axle, and the long arm running from the center of the axle in the opposite direction. Now when you push the lever with a force, say, of 100 newtons, you can turn the whole axle around with a force of 400 newtons. And that's how you're able to open doors and steer cars and ships and pull up anchors with such ease. Thanks to the ancient wise men and their circular lever. Yes, congratulations. You've just reinvented the wheel.